In order to do benchmark 6.1, you have to decide on, from these two, which one is a factor cancel and which one is a long division. Now, the way I know which one's factoring is you look at the denominator. Look at the two denominators. If a denominator has an x squared or an x cubed, it's probably going to factor, be the factoring one and cancel, where if it doesn't have a denominator with a power, it's probably long division. That's usually a good way to check. So, this one we know is going to be factor cancel. So there's a factor at the top. I use this method. Multiply front and back. Put that down at the bottom. What two numbers multiply to get that? And add to get this. Divide by the front number. Reduce. And then remember, the 2 goes in front and the 1 stays back. The negative 1 stays and the 5 goes to the front. So that's your numerator. Here, you are going to take a negative 3 out. Just be careful if your x squared is ever negative, you're going to be pulling a negative out. And when there's two terms, they're probably trying to make the x squared and these two pieces, um, you're trying to make both pieces, squares. And see here, see how they're both squares? And the way I know that first, I just noticed that they're both threes. And again, I said earlier, you want a negative. So you want a negative to pull out because of the negative x squared, and then you look for the biggest GCF possible. So this and this would be left over when you multiply negative 3 in. This still could be factored as a difference of squares. This right here is the denominator. These cancel, and there is your simplified version. This one's long division. So to do a long division, you have to divide. So what times x gives you 3x cubed? 3x squared. Then you multiply this times both pieces, write it here. Subtract down. That's why you got 9x squared. Bring this down. What times x gives you 9x squared? 9x. Multiply by both pieces. Subtract down. What times x gives you 25x? 25. 25. Multiply by both pieces. Subtract down. That is your remainder over your divisor. It's kind of like a mixed number. Alrighty. Now, in order to do 6.2 benchmark, you have two equations that are rational. One of them is a proportion. One of them you multiply everything by the denominators. Well, hopefully you can tell this is a proportion because you have a fraction equal to a fraction. And then this one, you're going to take each denominator and multiply it by each numerator, one by one. So, we're going to multiply each numerator by each denominator. See right there in the red? See both denominators multiplied by each piece. Here the x's cancel. And when I distribute negative 2 to both pieces, I'm left with this. That cancels. When I multiply the x times the 1, I get x, or minus and over here, nothing cancels, so we just got to do some distribution. So I first look like I multiplied 3 times x, and now I'm distributing 3x, so I get this in blue. And over here, I want to simplify, so I combine these two pieces. So what I'm doing is I'm simplifying both sides. Then, because I have x squared, I want to get it equal to 0. If you didn't have an x squared, you want to just get x by itself. So to get x squared equal to 0, the equation equal to 0, I'm going to keep the x squared here and move these two pieces over, so I might add the 3x over, and I minus the 8 over. When I combine those, I get negative 9x, I still have 3x squared, and then the negative 8, equaling 0. This does not factor, because when you multiply front and back, a negative 24, negative 9 on the bottom, no two numbers multiply to get that, and add to get that. So I have to use quadratic formula, so make sure you can memorize this. I plug all pieces in, negative b, b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, simplify the square root, it's 177, and there is my answer. Quadratic formula is very likely. Now we also have to check for extraneous. This is some crazy decimal. That crazy decimal, actually there's two answers here, because the plus or minus. Those answers will not make a zero, the, the denominator equal to zero. So make sure you always check for extraneous. But quadratic formula rarely ever is extraneous. Okay, this one is a proportion, so you're cross-multiplying. So I multiply these two, right there, and I multiply these two, right here. 
So this is FOIL, and this is distributive property. So this is the left, and the red piece becomes here. Combine those, and I'm going to start moving the x squareds over. In the process of doing that, x squareds disappear. These combine to be x. And then, so once I get to that, all the x squareds disappear. I don't need to make it equal to 0 anymore. I just have to get x by itself. So I minus the x over, divide by negative 7, and there's my answer. Does 1 7th make either denominator 0? No. It wouldn't make either denominator 0, so these answers fine. Make sure when you're solving, you check for extraneous solutions because that could happen.